churches in Ossining. My name is Cooper Conway and I am the priest in charge at the churches. We welcome you to this morning's service. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Now in silence let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the, in the beginning, beginning, is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come. Let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King among all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of a pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decree that he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of our Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to and the, the Holy, holy Ghost. Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hi, everyone. Sally Evans and Marjorie Barnes are the co-chairs of the Sister Parish's stewardship campaign this year. And they're going to be doing something a little bit differently, and I'd like to talk to you about it. 
Stewardship is typically about pledging, which is a vital component of any healthy church. Many folks have kept current with their pledging, and I offer my heartfelt thanks. This year, the committee chairs wanted to emphasize other ways in which we can contribute to the life of our faith community and to the community at large. There are two letters coming to your homes this week. The first contains your pledge cards for 2021. The second one includes a card where you'll be asked to reflect on and to list what you see as your spiritual gifts. That's difficult. We simply don't say these things out loud because we don't want to seem full of ourselves. But to me, far worse than that is believing that we don't have any gifts at all. What I'd like to say to you today that that last bit is simply not true. Our Creator has endowed us with many gifts, not as a reward, but a grace that has been given to all of us from the very beginning. In James chapter 1, we hear, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. I've given a lot of thought as to what these gifts are and how do we use them in this crazy isolated time, and two things are clear to me. One, they're not fixed. We don't get one thing, but many. They change and evolve as the need arises. Two, we often don't see them until somebody else brings them out of us. Sometimes it's in the form of a request, asking for something you never considered, say serving on vestry. They saw something in you and thought you could do that thing. You might hear about something and decide to respond, even if it's out of your comfort zone. These moments, those innate senses that bring us to action are the direct result of the Holy Spirit. Now you can call it intuition, your inner voice, whatever. The origins are the same, and when recognizing gifts in others and ourselves, God provides us with opportunities to use them. Often we think of gifts as something big, larger than life, beyond how we like to think of ourselves, and it makes it easy to say that we believe we don't have any. That's a very limiting view, and it essentially blocks us and denies the grace that God has given us. Right now we're isolated. We're separated from family and friends, and we see our church community through Zoom or whenever we bravely venture out to an outdoor communion service. Our isolation makes it hard to know how to reach out. When we support one another, we are nurturing. It's how we remind ourselves that God is in our lives, especially when we feel so disconnected. I won't give you a laundry list of possible actions. You'll decide that on your own and what they might be. The second stewardship level will help you to sort these things out. We're limited by what we think we can do. But again, do not deny your grace. I just ask you to reflect and to think about the church and the wider community beyond our church walls. There are myriad ways that you can bring those talents to bear by working with others. Because that is the purpose of grace, service to others. Is it vestry, serving on social justice committee, or checking in with others? Let me give you an example. In the spring when COVID was ravaging the state, my niece Megan Regan read about the lockdowns at nursing homes. She thought about her beloved Pop Pop, who had stayed in such a residence. She thought of my very frail older sister, who loved tulips and spent weeks in a rehab center here in Westchester. Megan was feeling that she had to do something. So she took to social media to launch the Tulip Project. She made an appeal to solicit greeting cards, just to give isolated people a little bit of joy while they waited for the doors to reopen to family and loved ones. What she got was an avalanche of small gifts, puzzles, games, cash contributions, all, all manner of things. And they rolled in at such a volume that she had to buy shelving and get a P.O. box. My point here is that what her career was, she was a manager of hotel restaurants. Something nudged Maggie to put her idea out there. And she acted on that inner voice, the Holy Spirit. And through that, she gave people the opportunity to act on their own desires, hundreds of other people, to help and to do something in this scary and isolating time. From the small request for some cards, she tapped into something much, much bigger. Did she imagine that it would mushroom like that? Absolutely not. She would not have dared. What I'm telling you here is that we're not here to do the huge thing. We simply need to look for opportunities. God provides us and sees where it goes. 
It's not the grand gesture that counts. It's the act of being mindful of others and seeing the grace within them and finding a way to honor that. So I'll leave you with this thought from Peter chapter 4. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So thanks for your time, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye. A reading from Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. <clears throat> he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You, you are, are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? Whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday, we hear yet again in the Gospel of Matthew how Jesus faces a challenge from the powers that be. It makes me ask myself, what did it take for him to be the chosen one? You know, right from the beginning of this Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, Matthew links Jesus with King David, calling him the son of David, the son of Abraham. And throughout the gospel, even in the very chapter before this one, that initial claim is fortified. In that 21st chapter, Jesus rides into Jerusalem for the last time. He's on the back of a donkey, just as Zechariah prophesied that the anointed one, the chosen one, would do. Now in this 22nd chapter, the leaders of Israel's people test Jesus. They seek to discredit him in the eyes of God's people. Jesus' road was not an easy one. It never had been. His criticism of the systems of the day made him a target for those leaders. So I ask you, what did it take for Jesus to be the chosen one? Sue Monroe just spoke to you about the gifts of the Spirit, and she rightly pointed out that for many, if not all of us, these are hard to name, not to mention to claim in our lives. We shy away from the idea of having spiritual gifts. But that got me thinking. Jesus was a human being. As the Christ, he was also God. But as Jesus, he walked, he slept, he worked, he ate. He was fully human. So maybe Jesus bar Joseph, when he faced times of trial, fell back on the gifts God had given him. Yes, he used his God-given talents, but more than that, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which he had received as a human child. Special gifts, which allowed him to live out his ministry as the chosen one. Let's see if we can identify some of these spiritual gifts in today's story. As the story begins, the powers that be, which are the religiously orthodox Pharisees and the culturally assimilated Herodians, come together, we are told, to ensnare Jesus in his speech. Their purpose is to confuse Jesus, trip him up, and discredit him. They begin by flattering him, that is, pointing out the good qualities he actually possesses, but which they do not really believe that he has. You are honest, they say, impartial, 
independent. So they have named Jesus natural talents. And then they ask a damned if you do, damned if you don't question. It's like the question, when did you stop beating your wife? The question is designed to trip him up. Is it lawful, they ask, to pay the tax to Caesar? Now, if Jesus says yes, then the people will see him as a puppet of the Roman Empire. But if he says no, then the Roman occupiers will see him as a zealot and a danger to their authority. But clever as the trap is, Jesus avoids it. He stops. Perhaps he prays. Then he uses the gifts which the Spirit provides him. First, he perceives what the leaders are doing, employing the use of wisdom. Then he names what he sees in the questioners. He calls them hypocrites, using the gift of prophecy. Finally, he answers their question, and in so doing, he teaches the crowd that life is complex, but negotiable with help from God. So he uses the gift of teaching. One answer reveals three spiritual gifts, wisdom, prophecy, teaching. But that's not all. Earlier in the 10th chapter of his gospel, Matthew has quoted Jesus as saying, do not be anxious about what you are to say, for it is not you that speaks, but the Holy Spirit. So in today's gospel, Jesus demonstrates what it looks like to set anxiety aside and let the Spirit do the talking. Now, I'm not sure that this is a gift of the Spirit. Maybe it's more like a fruit which comes from employing his spiritual gifts. But it is most certainly spirit-related. And it makes me think of a story, a moment in my own life. Now, I'm sure you've heard this, or at least some of you have, but it actually applies to this story pretty well. It was the year 1994, and I was in my second year at the Center for Spiritual Direction at General Seminary. I was not yet a seminarian, but I was reveling in the daily lessons that the Center opened to me about the world of the Spirit. Anyway, on that Saturday in the second year, as an aspirant to holy orders, I was invited to come to an all-day Commission on Ministry retreat. But believe me, it was anything but a retreat. It was an all-day session where we aspirants were individually trafficked from room to room to be questioned by Commission members. And they asked some doozies. Tell us about your prayer life. What do you believe happens when the bread and the wine are consecrated? If you were running a church with an endowment, how would you manage that? Let's put it this way. To survive that day, you had to be on your toes. But more than that, you had to stay in constant contact with God. So that day, as I traveled from room to room, really knowing nothing, I was enjoying myself. That is, until I met, ta-da, the mean question man. Now, he started out nicely enough. Well, Cooper, he said, I've read your materials, and you have a fluency with metaphor. You'd be a good priest, but, Nowhere in your materials do I read about leadership. And we don't need priests, we need leaders. 
I don't think my mouth fell open, but I know my brain did. I stopped and believe me, I prayed. For if I tried to list leadership moments, I would be justifying myself. And if I said, that's not a strength, well, that prospect wasn't pretty either. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, it felt like. So I prayed to the Holy Spirit. Help, I, I asked her. And then I heard a little voice inside tell me, this is what you're going to say. Uh, uh, nope, nope, nope. I said, I'm not going to do that. And then the Spirit said, just do it. So I pulled myself up in my best imitation of my imperious mother. I looked the man in the eye, lowered my voice and said, do I look weak to you? <laughs> it stopped him in his tracks. All human beings need the help of the Holy Spirit. And to all human beings, the Spirit gives gifts. In Jesus' case today, it was wisdom, prophecy, and teaching, which bore the fruit of freedom from anxiety. In my case, it was a flash of insight and a shot of courage. In your case, it is, well, only you and the Spirit know what that is. But our lesson for today is that spiritual gifts are what it took. They're what it took for Jesus to be the chosen one of God. And spiritual gifts are what it takes for us to be among God's chosen. So this week, take some time. Assess your gifts from the Spirit. And then actively share them with us, your community of faith. We will all be richer for it. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God commands us to love one another. In baptism, we promise to seek and serve Christ in all people and to strive for justice and peace. Let us now honor those vows and pray for our nation in this election year. 
for wise and just leaders and for the needs of all the nations of the world. We pray for continued blessings on peacemakers, on leaders who value peace, and on all who promote nonviolent solutions to conflict. God of peace and gentleness, hear our prayer. We pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our brothers and sisters. We pray for the rural and urban poor and for an end to the cycles of violence that threaten our world. God of generosity and compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations that they may live in unity, peace, and concord, and that all people may know justice and enjoy the freedom that only God can give. God of liberty and freedom, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the growing disparity between rich and poor, and for the grace and courage to strive for economic justice. God of all gifts and blessings, hear our prayer. We pray for an end to prejudice throughout our country, that we may respect all people as precious children of God, both in our hearts and under the law. God of fellowship and equality, Hear our prayer. We pray for a reverence of creation, that we may have the tools and the will to conserve and share it, and that we may become better stewards of the earth. God of nature and the universe. Hear our prayer. We pray for all immigrants, refugees, and pilgrims from around the world, that we may welcome them and treat them with fairness, dignity, and respect. God of justice and hope, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the aged, the infirm, and the disabled, that all may have access to proper health care. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We pray for all prisoners and captives that a spirit of forgiveness may replace vengeance and retribution. God of absolution and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all children and families and particularly for the orphaned, neglected, abused, and those who live in fear of violence or disease that they may be relieved and protected. God of children and families, hear our prayer. We pray for the reconciliation of all people and for the church throughout the world, that it may be an instrument of your healing love. God of outreach and restoration, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died as a result of violence, war, disease, or famine. God, save us from hardness of heart. God of eternal life and resurrecting love. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Watch over our country now and in the days ahead. Guide our leaders and all who will vote, and make your ways known among all people. In the passion of debate, give us a quiet spirit and a courageous heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy 
that your church throughout the world may persevere in steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised, through your well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love. Make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Thanks be to God.